This video is about problem solving with radical expressions, and so we're basically going to be using the Pythagorean theorem to solve some word problems here. Our first example, a triangle has a hypotenuse of length 25 centimeters and one leg of length 15 centimeters. Find the length of the other leg. So whenever you have a word problem that is describing some kind of situation, it's always a good idea to draw a picture. And so this is supposed to be my right angle, even though it's kitty wampus. The hypotenuse is the side directly across from the 90 degree angle. So this is my hypotenuse. And it has a length of 25 centimeters. And then one of the legs is 15 centimeters. It doesn't tell us which one, and it doesn't really matter, actually. The legs are always called A and B, and the hypotenuse is always called C on a right triangle. And the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So it's the sum of the leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So you can plug this 15 into either A or B. It doesn't matter which one you put it into. Um, I'll put it into A. So we have 15 squared plus B squared is equal to 25 squared. And 15 squared is 225. And 25 squared is 625. And so we need to solve this for B. So I'm going to subtract 225 from both sides. That gives me B squared is equal to 400. And then to unsquare the B, we would take the square root. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. And so B is the square root of 400, and the square root of 400 is 20. Usually when you take the square root on both sides, you do plus or minus, because you don't know if you got the 400 underneath here from squaring positive 20, or if you squared negative 20 to get the 400. Um, but in this case, we only want the positive root because um, this is the length of a, one of the legs of the triangle, and so it can't possibly be um, a negative 20. And the units on that was centimeters, and whenever you're doing a word problem, you should answer the word problem with a sentence. So the length of the other leg is 20 centimeters. And these won't always turn out to be nice numbers like this, but OK, our next one. Um, a kite is secured to a rope that's tied to the ground. So we have a kite that's tied to the ground here. A breeze is blowing so that the kite string is at an angle like this, and the rope is tight. So again, anytime you have some kind of a situation you could draw a picture of, you should. And in, this kite is directly above a flagpole. So there's a flagpole right here. That's 30 feet from where the rope is staked down. So this distance from where the rope is staked down to the bottom of the flagpole is 30 feet. And we want to find the altitude of the kite if the rope is 110 feet long. So the length of this rope is 110 feet. And we need to calculate this distance. OK, so again, we're given the hypotenuse and one of the legs. We need to find the other leg. So basically, we can make a right triangle here. And so we know the hypotenuse in one of the legs. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And one of the legs is 30, so that's going to be 30 squared is equal to b squared, not equals plus. 
and it's equal to 110 squared. So 30 squared is 900 plus b squared and 110 squared is uh, 21, or 12,100 and we want to subtract 900 from both sides and we get b squared is equal to 11,200 and then you want to take the square root on both sides and the square root of 11,200 is 105.8300524 was what I got on my calculator here. And it doesn't tell us what to round to. For me, if, it, if I don't tell you what to round to, then round to three decimal places. On my math lab, it should tell you how many decimal places it wants you to round to, so it might ask you to round to the nearest foot. If it wants the nearest foot, then you would answer 106 to one decimal place, 105.8. You need to read the problem, though, and usually it's right under where you enter your answer and is where they'll say how many decimal places it wants the answer to. So we're going to round it to three decimal places. Um, that's typically my standard um, if I don't say anything. And so um, we want to answer this with um, a sentence. And so the altitude of the kite is 105.830 feet. In our last one here, the maximum number of volts E that can be placed across the resistor is given by E equals the square root of PR, where P is the power in watts and R is the resistance in ohms. If, two, if a two watt resistor can have at most 40 volts of electricity across it, find ohms of resistance of this resistor. Okay, so we're supposed to find the number of ohms of resistance of the resistor. P is power in watts. R is the resistance in ohms. So we're looking for R. And we're given that we have a 2 watt resistor. And so P is equal to 2 watts and 400 volts of electricity, and so that was E. So 40 volts is E. So now plug in what we know. So we know that E is equal to 40. So we're going to replace the E in this equation with 40. So 40 equals the square root of P times R, and we know that P is 2, so that would be 2R. So to undo a square root, we want to square both sides of our equation. And 40 squared gives us 1,600. And that's equal to 2R. And then to finish solving for R, we just divide by 2 on both sides. So we get R is equal to 800. And resistance, again, um, is in ohms. So the number of ohms of resistance for this resistor is 800 ohms. And basically, the best way to answer the question with your sentence is just to rephrase the question as a sentence with your answer in it. 
And that's it for problem solving with radical expressions. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.